thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And I'm doing a video today about the 10 biggest books that are on my TBR, which was inspired by Sarah from Freshly Read Books, as she is doing a big book reading challenge. She recently put a video about this on her channel, which I'll link in the description box down below. And so I made a video back in 2019 about my 10 biggest books on my TBR and I thought it'd be good to do another version of this now to see how many of those books are still there and what the 10 biggest books are now, so whether I've made any progress. So I did look obviously at the comparison between the two years and I have read one of the books that were on the list then but I have unhauled four of them so half of the list is the same half is different and also one book got bumped off the list because there were other books which were bigger so the book which I read for my 2019 biggest books was this one which is Testament of Youth by Vera Britton this was a wonderful book and I was really really glad that I read it. It's a memoir about Vera Britton who was a nurse in World War One, and she has to postpone her place at Oxford to go and, and sign up as a nurse um, in World War One, and it's basically about her experiences doing that um, and afterwards and it's a really really incredible book and for me in particular because I am medical then it was really interesting to hear about kind of the details of the medical things and what they had to do in World War One as well so it was a fascinating book which I really really enjoyed so that one came off my TBR so if I talk about the ones that are on my list now. I'll go from smallest to biggest. The first one is one that I've actually got as an ebook on my Kindle, and that is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This book gets so much acclaim, and I actually did look at all of the Storygraph um, average ratings for these books, and all of them on the list are either like 3.9 all the way up to about 4.4, so they've all got excellent reviews. Bear Town, um, I know it's something to do with like a forest encroaching on a town or something like that and like how it and the I think something's happening to the community which live in this town but I should have rechecked what it was about before I started filming this but I didn't um but I'm not wanting to look too deeply into what it's about just because everybody says it's such a good book and I don't like it when it gives too much of the plot away before reading it the next book on my list is Casual Mara by Susan Howitch and I've told this story before but basically one day when I was a kid and living at home still we were getting stuff down out of the loft and we found a box of my mum's old books and this, not this copy but this was in one of my mum's um, boxes of books that they had in the attic and she said how much she loved this book and then my brother immediately started reading it and he read it like so many times while we lived at home like he used to read this book and Dracula on repeat like just those two books he would finish one start another then go back to the first one again I don't know why it was a bit of a running joke um so he got me a copy of this absolutely years ago and I feel really bad that I haven't read it yet because it sounds really good as well so on the blurb it says there were two subjects that lonely widower Edward de Salis never discussed his dead wife and his family home in Ireland, matchless Cashelmara. So when he meets Marguerite, a bright young American with whom he can talk freely about both, he's able to love again and takes her back to Ireland as his wife. But Marguerite soon discovers that married life is not what she expected and that she has married into a troubled family, bitterly divided by a love and hatred. Cashelmara becomes the curse of three generations as they play out their fates in a spellbinding drama which inexorably moves towards murder and retribution. So this is giving me like Rebecca vibes reading the back of this and I also really love books set in Ireland so I need to read this. I just see what year it was published in. This was published first in 1974. A lovely cover as well and that one has 720 pages. The next book is a book which most of the world has already read and I've had and always been too scared to read and this is still on my list from five years ago. This is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I'm just scared of this book because everyone says it's like so traumatic and dark and sad that it makes me feel scared. But I need to just get over it and read it because a lot of the people really, really love this book. Some people dislike it and say it's a bit like trauma porn. But 
I want to give it a try. I know it's about four friends who are in New York and about their sort of lives together. Um, But I think one of the characters has had like a lot of abuse in his life and I think it focuses mainly on him. Give me some encouragement, guys. If you've read this and you really like it, then give me some encouragement to pick it up. That one has... 720 pages as well. This is a new edition, the next one, which is interesting to me, especially because of where I come from. And this is called Dreaming the Eagle by Amanda Scott. And it's the first in, I think, a trilogy about Boudicca. And Boudicca was somebody who we learned a lot about when I was at school. And I think because I'm from Colchester and um, Boudicca had time in Colchester. And there's lots about her like sort of in the area where I grew up and stuff and in the castle and stuff like that so I feel that she's always been someone who's been kind of a prominent historical figure and this sounds really amazing so it says at 12 she killed her first warrior at 21 she defended her land against an invasion by the most powerful empire the world had ever seen at 40 she led her people in a bloody revolt and became a legend set in a Britain before the Romans came Amanda Scott's thrillingly imagined novel brings the brutal world of druids, dreamers, warriors and their gods to vivid life. The opening chapter in a story of passion, courage and spectacular heroism pitched against overwhelming odds. Doesn't that just sound incredible? Just like, I I think I heard about this from um, Louise Savage and as soon as she described it, I was like, yes, I really want to buy this book. So I went and bought it and then it's just sat on my shelf ever since. So I really would like to prioritise this one because it sounds so, so good. That one's also got 720 pages. It's a popular number. (laughs) And then another one that I just got really recently, which is another new edition, um, which is again on my Kindle, and it's The Covenant of Water by Abraham Vergaez. I remember from when I talked about it in my last haul video that it is about, I think, Kerala in southern India, which is which has a lot of water and at least one person of each generation of this family dies by drowning and it's about a young girl who's about 12 on her wedding day who goes on to be the matriarch of a family in a time when a lot of change is being seen in India and because I loved Cutting for Stone which is his first book so much then I am very excited to read this book which I've heard nothing but really good reviews about. So the next one is one that I got, another new edition. I got this as part of my birthday haul and it was because I am slowly, slowly taking part in the Mega Dickens Read Along, which is where we read all of Dickens' works in order of publication date. So I've so far read Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist, The Old Curiosity Shop and Nicholas Nickleby. And I started um, Barnaby Rudge on audio. I think I just needed a little bit of a break from Dickens because I wouldn't normally read all of an author's works one after the other like that. So one every one to two months. So I needed a bit of a break. And I fancied actually trying one in paper because all the rest are done on audio because they're all free on Audible. And they're often read by famous actors. So I got this one. I really love the cover. This is the vintage, vintage? vintage edition. Um, which is the ones with the red spines. I actually, I started getting the Penguin classics, but I actually like the vintage ones better because they've got nice um, spacing around the pages, which I appreciate. So um, this one, I know it's something to do with the Catholic riots. I've got sort of four hours into the audiobook and it, the the plot has kind of escaped my memory because I started it quite a few months ago. So I thought, I think I'll probably start from the beginning again, but it'll be interesting to read this as opposed to listen and see if I get on better with reading it. But I just thought the cover is really stunning on this one. So that is weighing in at 730 pages. Then I have another book which is still on my previous list. This book I got when I was 18. So that's quite a long time ago. And I have started it so many times and it's it's not hard to read and it's a good book. And so I don't know why I've kind of put it down. I think it's because maybe I need to read it alongside something else, alongside a fiction book possibly. But I really want to come back to this and read it properly. So this is A People's History of the United States 1492 to the Present by Howard Zinn. He has now sadly died. Um, But this edition, I'm not sure when this edition came out. Let's have a look. I know that he'd added more as time went by. So this bit came out in 2003. And um, 
I think because it's in hardback, I think I've now had it for 20 years. So that's a bit embarrassing. So that one has 752 pages, but it's big pages. So it feels like it, if it was in paperback, I'm sure it'd be a lot more than that. Then I have one which I've wanted to read for so long, which was on my list five years ago. So I don't understand why I haven't read it yet. And this is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So I feel that I would probably like this more than The Secret History. So I loved The Secret History. I ended up giving it four stars because reading back on my previous review, which was from about 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago, I loved the writing, but I found the characters incredibly frustrating a lot of the time. And that I can just remember that the characters like drank like so much alcohol and like half the time I was just getting frustrated with them because all they were doing was like drinking. If they weren't doing that so much, they would have probably got through their problems a lot more easily. <laughs> I just remember now, I was really frustrated with them that they wouldn't just like take a bit more responsibility for themselves. So I think that's why it ended up being a four star book rather than a five star book for me. And this book, is not about students. Um, this is about a, bo a boy who's in a an art gallery when there's a bomb that goes off and his mum gets killed and he, there's a painting which is this a painting of Alpha Goldfinch which he takes from the scene and about how his life goes on from there and I watched the film of it when it came out which was a few years ago now and I really loved the film can't remember loads about the film now which is good because I don't want to know all in advance about the plot but I really don't understand why I haven't read this because I'm really really want to and I remember I think I started it in try a chapter once and I was really hooked straight away so I don't quite know what happened but this one has 784 pages and then my top two the first one is one that I only just got and I'm blaming it on you, Aaron, from Aaron Read a Book, because you made me buy this. <laughs> and this is um, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So um, there are a few authors that my friend Aaron really loves, and he really loves Tolstoy, and he said he's going to put nice peer pressure on me to read some of Tolstoy's books. And so I did buy this. This is I got this edition from uh, Vinted and... So it's got like, uh, I don't know if the person who had it put this cover on or what, but it's got like a, like a shiny cover on, um, and it's in really good condition. And so I'm happy I got it, but I didn't, I think I didn't realize quite how many pages it is. So it's 963 pages, but my friend Jo, who I do loads of buddy reads of classics with, she really loves this book as well. And so two people whose opinions I respect have, um, said how much they love this book. So that's why I went ahead and bought it. And again, it's their vintage edition with the nice, not not too small font and nice um, nice borders around the pages as well, which makes it feel a lot easier to read than when it's like really dense and small. And then the biggest book on my TBR, which is one that I have had since my last video, is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, which is 1,088 pages. I feel like this is not gonna be a difficult read and I am, I think this year, going to buddy read this with Jo. And I think, like, the, the text is not too small. Um, there's quite a lot of get paragraph breaks and stuff when you have a look through. So I don't think it's going to be too hard to read. And I think it's going to be one that, even though it's a massive book, I can read quite quickly. I'm really looking forward to it, getting to this. So yeah, the ones that didn't make it onto the list again, so The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver, which was, like I say, number 12 on the list now, which I do still own. And then I unhauled from the previous collection, Human Traces by Sebastian Folks, um, Labyrinth by Kate Moss, which I really enjoyed the TV adaptation, but the book didn't have very good reviews. And An Incident of the Finger Post by Ian Pears, which is a historical murder mystery set, like, I don't know, like in the... 1400s or something um which was my friend's book and it had just been on my shelf for so long and I'd never really felt inclined to pick it up so even though it sounded quite good I gave it back to her so they're the ones that didn't make it and like I said I read Testament of Youth um by Vera Britton so yeah so they're my biggest books I could really do with some like encouragement so I'm not going to set myself like a goal of 
reading one a month or anything like that because I'm trying not to put myself in in the position of having lots of goals that I have to do and then limiting my choice every month for my TBR. It would be nice if I could like read three or four of these, I think, for um for the year. So let me know if you've got particular preferences of what you think I should read and I will be spurred on by <laughs> your opinions. And um, I hope that you all have a really lovely week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.